why would the state of Arkansas step in to override parents, physicians, psychiatrists, endocrinologists who have developed guidelines? Why would you override those guidelines? Over the past year, the attacks on trans people from Republicans have severely escalated. But finally, people in large media outlets are starting to take notice. Well, I think it's important that all of those physicians, all of those experts, for every single one of them, there's an expert that says we don't need to allow children to be able to take those medications. That there are many instances right. where... But you know that's not true. You, you know it's not for everyone there's one. There's... These are the established. Well, I don't know that, medical... that that's not true. I don't know that. Well, then why you would you that. why would you pass a law then if you don't if you don't know that that's true? Wouldn't you? Well, have I done know so? that there are doctors and that we had plenty of people come and testify before our legislature mm -hmm. who said that uh, you know we have ninety eight percent of the young people who have gender dysphoria right. uh, that they are able to move past that and once they have the the help that they need no longer suffer from gender dysphoria 98 percent wow. without uh that medical treatment that's an, that, that's an so, incredibly made up figure that's that doesn't comport with any of the studies or documentation that exists from these medical organizations. So John Stewart recently did an interview with the Attorney General of Arkansas about their anti-trans laws that they keep passing. And finally, a cisgender person with a lot of media influence is actually stepping up to challenge these ridiculous ideas from transphobes and to show very, very clearly that these transphobic Republicans don't actually have any real argument that's based off of anything other than hate. I think John Stewart here really demonstrates the model of how people should be responding to these transphobes. The data is not on their side, and the morality is not on their side. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, basically any medical institution that has anything to do with any type of transition care says that transition care is safe, effective, improves people quality of life, and is really just the moral thing to do. It's quite literally life-saving care. And that all of the arguments against it are just ridiculous, nonsensical fear-mongering. Because think about it, one thing you'll hear a lot of Republicans talk about is how the effects of hormones are irreversible. But think about this for a second. If the effects of hormones really were irreversible, then people wouldn't be able to transition in the first place, right? Think about it. People wouldn't be able to transition as adults if hormones were this permanent, irreversible thing. It's just fundamentally ridiculous. It's just a line that they use to fearmonger. But the reality behind the Republican outrage is not even any fear of like effects of like young people who might want to transition or anything like that. It is the fear of the idea that parents don't own their children like property. I know, it's wild, but there are a lot of people in the United States that view parenthood as ownership of children as their property. And the idea that young people would be allowed to transition and be themselves, no matter what their parents think, is something that challenges that idea. It challenges the idea that children are property, and it pushes this idea that children are human beings who have autonomy, that parents don't have ownership over their children, that parents simply have responsibility for their children. And that's why there are tons of stories across the country of Republican parents of children who when they find out that their children are trans and they actually research it and figure out what's going on, who support and love their children and have a healthy mindset towards parenting, will accept their children and love them anyways. In fact, in the full show that Jon Stewart did, there was one such parent who had exactly that experience. They were a very, very right-wing Republican, and when they found out their kid was trans, they approached that with a sense of responsibility, and they took care of their child, and they supported and loved them through their transition anyway, because this is not something that people are pushing on young people. It's just a normal part of human life, and it always has been. Trans people have always been around throughout history. The only question is whether or not we as a society choose to support trans people or choose to alienate and marginalize them. Let, let me let me try and flip it a different way and see if maybe this this can help. In Arkansas, if you have pediatric cancer, and obviously we all want to protect children, I think we established that earlier. Whose guidelines do you follow? 
for pediatric cancer. I think that's a very extreme example that's not at all in line with what we're talking about. We're not saying that at some point, because when you have cancer, it literally is, and particularly pediatric cancer, and having friends that have lost children sure. to pediatric cancer, having a four-year-old, I'm sure. I've got some bad news for you. Parents with children who have gender dysphoria have lost children to suicide and, and depression. And they absolutely Because it's have. acute. And so these mainstream medical organizations have developed guidelines through peer-reviewed data and studies. And through those guidelines, they've improved mental health outcomes. So I'm confused why you follow AMA guidelines and AAAP guidelines for all other health issues than Arkansas, because we checked, but not for this. Another thing they'll always push is the idea that it's experimental and that we don't really know the effects of transition or anything like that. But the reality is the core elements of transition-related care have been around for a hundred years at least. That's not even counting some of the, like, you know, ancient techniques that people used for transition care, right? Just based on modern science, for like a hundred years, different hormone therapies have been around. And in fact, the puberty blockers that a lot of Republicans are freaking out about have been used for a very, very long time in the United States to delay precocious puberty, which can be very, very dangerous if kids are going through puberty far too early in life. And so these are things that we understand the effects of very, very well. Except right now, because so many people are ignorant about the reality that affects trans people and are ignorant about transition-related care, that there's all this fear-mongering from Republicans. And they're quite literally trying to ban the existence of trans people in so many places across this country. And that's not even to get into the ridiculous conspiracy theories around trans people that these extreme right-wingers have. But unfortunately, what we've seen too much in the media is because a lot of this ignorance, people tend to both sides it. Even in major outlets like the New York Times, they'll continue to both sides the issues of trans people. They will take medical organizations on one side, and then they will take hate groups on the other side and say, golly gee, I can't tell the difference between these two things. We must weigh them equally. They will take individual transphobes with no experience in trans issues or trans care whatsoever and weigh them at the same degree as the medical experts that actually deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Not to mention the actual trans people themselves because I know we all get swept up in the ideas of like experts or whatever, but ultimately at the end of the day, what matters the most is trans people like myself being allowed to live our lives in peace because if we're not hurting anybody then why is it anybody else's business what exactly is it about the existence of trans people that has people all terrified it's just fundamentally ridiculous and luckily Jon Stewart actually did a decent job here of pointing that out as exactly such and so I personally recommend watching this full interview if you have the time for it just so that you can have all of these points if any transphobic weirdo decides to start some ridiculous argument with you 